So if you'd like to introduce yourself, really. I'm Ellie. Um, I'm 24 years old. I work in personal branding and tomorrow, uh, no, not tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow's the weekend. On Monday, I start my new job at Great Influence. Um, so I'll be a personal brand manager with them. And then alongside that, I'm also head of community at Neuropool. Um, so that kind of involves helping neurodivergent people get into jobs. Um, I was myself diagnosed with ADHD in about October time. Um, so I'd kind of always been misdiagnosed with anxiety and depression and kind of dug around this year after spending a lot of time, you know, convinced that anxiety wasn't the problem and eventually got my diagnosis with ADHD, with ADHD um, which kind of made a lot of stuff make sense that had gone on through my life. Um, and I'm also kind of on the waiting list slash thinking about going private for an autism diagnosis. So a lot of the kind of stuff around autism resonates with me as well. So I think it's probably most likely that the two are comorbid. Um, but yeah, I guess that's me. <laughs> yeah, okay. So to, to further on your ADHD and possibly autism diagnosis, how do you, they normally get diagnosed? Is it like a, a doctor assessment or? Yeah, so the process would be to kind of go to your GP and kind of bring up I think it's one of those things at the moment um unless it's kind of picked up in you as a child which is kind of usually the case for a lot of boys at school it's kind of picked up but I think you know as an adult it would be more that you'd have to kind of go away and do a bit of research yourself and kind of I think it's one of those things that if you don't come across it you wouldn't it wouldn't ever be picked up by anyone else I think because a lot of the symptoms do cross over so strongly with like anxiety and low mood and stuff like that um so for me it was kind of like I'd gone to the doctors with my anxiety um, and it's kind of been going around in circles and I was like you know anxiety is not the problem anxiety is almost a side effect of whatever else is going on and um, so I kind of did a, a bit of research digging around on my own and then like went to the doctors and said I think I've got ADHD and then they kind of do a kind of a brief you know why do you think I think if you, you can give some examples of like running through the symptoms that resonate with you and stuff like that um, and then if they think it's the right choice they'll refer you on to kind of the neurodevelopmental service in your area um, but for me the NHS waiting list was like two to three years so um, I decided to go private because I think I think um, I don't know I guess some people it'll be able, like would choose to wait or some people aren't privileged enough to, privileged enough to be able to go private um, but for me I was kind of at desperation point I was like going round and round in circles and I just wanted answers so it, I kind of could justify paying for them um, but yeah, in an ideal world, it would be to go to your GP and then get referred. But at the minute, it doesn't seem to be happening so well. <laughs> yeah, it's good to to hear that you say less privileged people can't, you know, go obviously go private and they yeah. are stuck in these awful waiting uh, lists for however many years. That's that's really nice to hear about that, that you understand that there is that privilege there. Yeah, um, definitely. So. I think I want to kind of pivot towards ADHD and autism in the workplace because that's kind of yeah. how I want to yeah, yeah. relate it. Um, what has your experience in the past been with, you know, employers? I mean, you've only just been diagnosed with ADHD, right? So yeah, beforehand. Yeah, I would say um, in the past, I've kind of always disclosed my anxiety. So it kind of turns out that that's also my ADHD. Um, but I think for me, it's the thing that's helped me the most throughout work is just having somebody that kind of understands that some days are going to be better than others. I think um, flexibility is super important. You know, like in my like old job, if I when I was working from home, if I was having a bad day, I could just say to my manager, look, I need a bit of time out. I'm going to go for a walk and I'll come back and make the hours up later. I think that's, a really important thing and just having somebody that understands that and you know you're going to get the work done it's not you're not I think understanding that not being able to do something and not wanting to do something are two completely different things and yeah. um, sometimes if you're having a bad day you know you can want to do all the work in the world but it's just not happening so if you can go away get some fresh air get some headspace and then come back to it it's better for kind of both you and your manager or employer because you know you're all getting the time away and then you're going to come back and do the work in a in a better way because your head's going to be in it and hmm. um, so yeah, I think understanding uh, and flexibility for me have been kind of the most 
important things that have helped me um in like jobs in the past okay so that that actually is perfectly moving on to what i was going to say next to say uh what can employers and workplaces implement like you know reasonable adjustments for people with adhd or autism or who are just you know generally neurodivergent so that kind of yeah. covers that but i mean if if you have any more ideas on that yeah i think maybe something to kind of like flag up is i was um very surprised by the support that you can get from access to work um i think i'd kind of found out about access to work while just kind of looking at i spoke to an adhd coach and she was like actually you know before you kind of look at booking it you can generally get funding for coaching through access to work so I kind of went through the assessment process just hoping to get funding for some coaching and the, the stuff that you can actually get to help I had no idea that that support was kind of even out there to pay for never mind out there to get funding for um so just stuff like so when I had my assessment the stuff that um I never actually got the stuff in the end because I'm moving to this new job so I need to go through the process again once I start but um like the stuff that you can get funding for there's like um dragon like transcription software and um, so you can kind of just like dictate your work which i would find super helpful i don't have to like sit at my desk for a long time typing i can kind of be wandering around and pottering around while i'm working um i think you can get like a standing desk so that you're not just sat down all day it kind of keeps you you stimulated if you're stood up um, I'm trying to think where else they like funded for me. Um, there's like the, um, and in, like a, it's called Remarkable. It's like a digital notepad, so you can kind of take notes, but it keeps it all stored digitally for you. And uh, software like Otter, which like transcribes all your calls for you. So I think for me that was, you know, I came off the call and I was like so impressed because I was like I didn't, I was like I was hoping to get some like six hours of coaching, and I've like come away with the support that's could make like day-to-day -day life so much easier for me so I think you know look if you're if you feel like you need support don't be afraid to ask for it and you know just just ask and see what comes back because you might be surprised with how much support you can actually get and I guess as well for employers it kind of can be the tiny little details that can make such a huge difference to someone's day Um, you know like something like Otter is not a big investment at all it, it kind of comes across as such a simple software but it can take so much panic away because when if you're in a meeting you don't have to panic about thinking oh, i can't forget what this person said i need to make notes on this and yep. not be able to concentrate you can just be present in the meeting and know that it's all going to be taken down for you to look through afterwards so yeah yeah i, I was going to use otter for this but i just opted for <laughs> zoom recording so i can just go back over it yeah, yeah that's great um so are you still going to be working at europol is that yeah so your... basically my I'm going to be a very busy bee. Um, but I think my the way I'll work with Neuroport will be kind of in as a consultant way. So I'm get basically my full time job is going to be a great influence. Um, but I'm going to be doing kind of like half a day a week over the week, but it'll be more like my ideas and strategy. And then I'll kind of somebody else will actually make the stuff happen. I guess it's the way it'll work. So yeah, but I am still going to be working with Neuroport. Okay, so I've got a question down about Neuroport, but I don't know if you want to talk about the up and coming yeah no we, we can or... talk about no we can talk yeah, about it so, it's more like suited to this sort of thing isn't it so. yeah so how does neuropool help unemployed people who are neurodivergent so neuropool works in kind of three main ways so kind of candidates can sign up directly so um people who are kind of already in employment or unemployed and looking for work can kind of submit their cvs and get help from a mentor and get resources um to kind of help them through the process of you know what it, what it's like to be um going through that process like what kind of skills they need to build and um, kind of just mentoring along the way for interviews and stuff like that um and then we work directly with universities to do employability programs for their neurodivergent students so kind of a similar thing but more of kind of a structured program for the students going from kind of being from student through graduation into finding a job um so that's up another way and then we kind of work directly with employers to either kind of go in and offer the training and stuff like that but then also do the recruitment for the employers so you know in a standard kind of recruitment model they'll kind of pay near a pool to find people to fill their roles um but i think like the main thing it like not every not every candidate 
goes to a neuropool job like we're, we'll still mentor people even if they're not suited to one of our roles that we've got from our clients you know it's not just a standard recruitment model it's not just we only help people to get into the jobs mm. that we can fill them in it's kind of like okay if you want to go and be I don't know a fashion designer but we don't work with anyone in the fashion industry we'll still help you to like get interviews and go through the interview process and stuff like that so I think it is it's a clever way that Jack's gone about doing it because it kind of helps people, but it's a commercial model at the same time, but doesn't kind of exclude anyone that doesn't benefit the commercial model. Yeah, that's great. Um, I obviously didn't prepare for a, a better, oh, sorry, I can't remember the name of the, your next one. Great influence. Great influence. Uh, so do you want to just explain how they yeah, yeah. help and what um, they do? So Great Influence is a personal branding agency. Um, so it kind of works with business leaders to kind of work on their social media presence and their PR presence. So um, I guess kind of like connecting them to their audience and kind of presenting them as like a business creator almost. I think the easiest way to think about it is almost like turning business people into influencers so it's like sharing the journey um sharing what goes on behind the scenes at their businesses you know showing what they're like as a person um but yeah just connecting like with their audience more on a personal level i would say okay that's great you should be very busy yeah. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I see, I see you i'm like and it's, oh, oh, it's you're just doing so crazy. much yeah well uh, yeah I think this like so this week so I don't start until Monday so I've like this is like the week between kind of finishing off like Christmas and New Year and like knowing that I'm going to be so busy from next week it's like right what can I do this week to make life as easy as possible for myself from next week yeah. um but yeah it's going to be hectic but <laughs> we'll see <laughs> right yeah I think that's all my questions for now uh is there any questions you want to ask me about anything or no, I don't think so. I think it all sounds it's it's good. Yeah, I'm, I think it's yeah, I think it's like good for people to know about all the different support that's out there for them. Yeah. You know, and I guess that's what you do as well. It's like you know, there's so many different ways that they can help their employees that they might kind of just it doesn't even feel like they're helping in that way. You know, just saying like you can take a two hour lunch if you want, and that could change someone's day because they can mm. think you know I've actually got time to get some fresh air and <laughs> and do some other things and I, yeah I think it's just like the tiniest adjustments can make the biggest difference yeah that's brilliant um thank you very much for making thank time you. in your busy schedule <laughs> no, <you're fine. laughs> uh, yeah perfect thank, thank you. you very much for speaking thank to you. me have a lovely weekend yeah you too bye, bye.